As a parent, you may not like seeing your baby or child being given an injection. However, vaccination will help protect them against a range of serious and potentially fatal diseases. There are a number of good reasons to have your child vaccinated. Vaccinations are quick, safe and extremely effective. Once your child has been vaccinated against a disease, their body can fight it off better. If a child isn't vaccinated, they're at a higher risk of catching and becoming very ill from the illness. The more people who are vaccinated, the greater the protection for the whole community. All children are offered a number of important vaccines during early childhood and in their teenage years. These follow a national schedule which can be viewed in full at NHS Choices website. They protect against a range of serious and potentially threatening conditions. Once you are registered at a GP, they will invite you to attend with your child. They are free of charge. During early childhood, your child will receive vaccines to protect against diphtheria, tetanus, rotavirus, pneumonia, meningitis, hepatitis B, polio, haemophilus influenza type B, measles, mumps and rubella. During teenage years, your child will be offered vaccines to protect against meningitis and HPV, girls only. Many of these vaccines require more than one injection or a booster. For maximum protection, it is important you attend all the appointments offered. For example, the MMR is given at one year and three years, four months of age. The flu vaccine is now available free of charge to children aged two to eight years old. This is available from your GP, preschool, or at a school once they attend. Parents may worry that too many vaccines at a young age could overload their child's immune system, but this isn't the case. Studies have shown there are no harmful effects from giving multiple injections or vaccines in one session. If you would like more information about the vaccine schedule in the UK, a useful tool is available on the NHS website. It will also tell you what your child needs if they were not born in the UK. It can be tricky deciding whether or not to keep your child off school, nursery or playgroup when they're unwell. Schools and nurseries follow national guidelines which advise when a child should be kept off school. If you are unsure, seek advice from them. This is to prevent the infection being passed on to other children and teachers. For example, if a child has experienced diarrhoea or vomiting, they should be kept at home for 48 hours after symptoms have gone. If you do keep your child at home, it's important to phone the school or nursery on the first day. Let them know that they won't be in and give them the reason. More information is available on the NHS website. You will be offered regular health and development reviews, health visitor checks for your baby until they are two years old. The reviews are usually done by your health visitor or a member of their team. They may be done in your home or at a GP surgery, baby clinic or children's centre. As well as making sure your child's development is on track, the health visitor will provide support to the mother and can help with issues such as safer sleeping techniques, breastfeeding, mental health and contraception. Shortly before or after your baby is born, you'll be given a personal child health record. This usually has a red cover and is known as the red book. It's a good idea to take your baby's red book with you every time you visit the baby clinic or GP. They will use it to record and monitor your child's weight and height, vaccinations and other important information. You can also add information to the Red Book yourself. A useful guide on how children develop during their first five years and what to expect can be found on the NHS website. You can approach your GP, health visitor, community worker or your child's school or nursery if you feel you and your family might benefit from some support. Some reasons for seeking help may include help with parenting or your child's behaviour, special educational needs, school attendance or other problems at school, concerns about your child's emotional well-being, family breakdown, children who care for others in the family. If you decide to take up early help, the professional will talk with you, but more importantly, listen to you to find out about any challenges that you and your family are experiencing. They will then discuss with you options for getting the help you need. If you consent, this may include talking with other professionals and completing an early help assessment. The next step will be to work with the professionals involved to create your own family action plan. 
When support is offered to you, you can decide whether to accept it or not. However, if there is a concern for your child's safety or well-being, and you won't be able to change the situation, children's social care might be contacted. If this is necessary, it will usually be discussed with you first. They will assess your needs, explain to you what they are worried about, and how they are going to help you. If you are worried about the safety of a child who is not your own, or you think they may be suffering, or likely to suffer significant harm, you can contact Children's Social Care yourself on one of these numbers. Peterborough 01733 864 170 Cambridgeshire 0345 045 5203 Outside office hours, at weekends and on public holidays, contact the emergency duty team on 01733 234 724. If you think a child is in immediate danger, call the police on 101 or in an emergency 999. If you are unsure whether to share your concerns, you can talk this through confidentially by calling the charity NSPCC on 0808 800 5000